And so I think the winter season for me came later in life when I was married and we went through a season of miscarriages and infertility and my husband losing his job and like just so many curveballs all at once. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. I just love the fact that spring has finally arrived, right? Here I am sitting in Franklin, Tennessee. And it's not that I don't love Christmas because I'm like Buddy the Elf. I love Christmas, the idea of it, setting up the lights and the decorations. I look forward to it all year long. But as soon as Christmas is over, it seems like all the lights go out. I drive to work in the dark. I drive home in the dark. I live in the dark. Everything looks dead. And I don't wanna live in the dark. I wanna live in the light. You know, I read this thing and it said that winter happens when the earth is tilted away from the sun. And I thought, wow, okay, if we change the spelling, and I'm not trying to be mom Jeezy or Jeezy at all, but if we change the S-U into the S-O-N, sometimes our hearts grow cold when we lean away from the, the sun, from the son of God. And we do that in the winter seasons of our life when things look dead, but they aren't. You might be thinking that something in your life looks dead right now. You might be looking at your marriage, the job, the opportunity, the fact that you've been trying to have babies and you haven't been able to yet, the diagnosis. There's a lot of things we can look at and they look dead. And I'm not here to preach winter season and death, doom and gloom. No, I'm here to preach the spring, right? Because winter may seem really long, but spring never misses its turn. And here's the thing about the winter season. You know, I, in St. Louis, we live on this little pond and around the pond in the wintertime, it looks pretty dead. But about the time that there's just a couple of spikes in temperature, just a couple of days that are a little bit different, just a little bit of light that is shed, all of a sudden you see these things come out of the ground. And around our pond, hundreds of jonquils start to bloom. It is literally gorgeous. And I get so encouraged. I'm like, ah, oh, that's the little picture of life that I needed. And I'm reminded, it's you, God. It's you who set the boundaries. It's you who made the summer and the winter. Psalm 74, 17 reminds us, God didn't just make the harvest season. He also made the season that looks like, ready, get it, looks like, it looks like everything is dead. But really what's happening is the trees have lost their leaves. They've gone to the ground to make fertilizer because they're fertilizing the life of the next season. One thing I know about life is life never stays the same. And sometimes we grieve the closing of a chapter instead of celebrating the opening of a new one. And it might look like something is over, but I'm telling you at the end of everything is the beginning of something else. Don't you dare put a period on a sentence where God has just put a comma. It might look like there's a pause in what's going on in your life and a pause in his blessing and a pause in his favor. But I'm here to tell you the pause has an end. Winter is a season. Every attack of the enemy has a shelf life, an expiration date. I believe today is the dawning of a new day and the beginning of a new season. So my friend Rebecca St. James is here, right? I love her. She has won so many awards, Dove Awards, Grammy Awards. She's done so much work. She's been working her entire life in Christian music. Everybody I know has like a CD from Rebecca St. James. I said CD because that's the era that she started out in. And then she's the voice of the Veggie Tales, the voice of Hope the Angel. She's been in movies. And then a movie gets made about her life. You think, sure, this chick has everything. She started when she was young, Silver Spoon, right? No, she's walked through many winter seasons so that God could bring her new life, new opportunity. And one of the things she walked through is really needing new life. If you've been needing a new spring in your life, whatever you do, press subscribe on YouTube right now. Press record if you're on your DVR because we're about to bring you some hope. Are you ready? Let's go. Rapid Fire Questions with Rebecca St. James. Three words to describe yourself. Creative, thoughtful, passionate. Unlimited supply of one thing. Unlimited supply of one thing. Children, I know that sounds crazy, but I always wanted like seven to 10 kids. And I'm the oldest of seven, love kids. Uh, I got three and I'm very thankful. The more the merrier, yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's just, and I didn't know, that's a lot. <laughs>
What's your coffee order? Major Dickinson's pour over, Pete's Major Dickinson's, um, pour over with about an inch of half and half. It's like so dark that it's like chocolatey. It's, it's beautiful. I am a little bit of a coffee snob, I will admit that, 100%. Favorite childhood memory? Climbing trees or um, hide and seek. It was just always so fun. I just, I love that. Rapid fire questions complete. You guys, she's here from all the things, including the new movie Unsung Hero, which is unbelievable, outrageous. We're filming this ahead of time. We're going to the premiere in Nashville tonight, but by the time you see this, that is over. We've sold out theaters all over the world, including St. Louis, my hometown. And I'm very impressed by this whole movie is about her, but she was one of the voices in Veggie Tales. <laughs> I cannot get over this. I love that you just highlighted that right oh. now. That makes me really happy. Well, my bucket list for my lifetime is I want to voice a cartoon character. Really? So how did you oh. end up? I know this is a very sideways way to get into this. This is going to relate to you. I have pinky promise. I have no <laughs> idea how. But like, how did you end up voicing a t cartoon character? Um, I've done it a few times actually. VeggieTales has probably had the most, like the longest life because yeah. I just feel like people, it's beloved from yes. like childhood for yeah. a lot of people and it works its way into their home and their household and their tradition. So I was in um, an Easter Carol, which was yeah, an Easter version of um, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And so I played this angel called Hope and I think the VeggieTales people you know, it was kind of at the height of me doing music yes. and they were just interested in having a Christian artist come on and sing as well as do the animated voice. So I had to audition for it though. They did not just give me that role. Yes. They had to make sure that I could voice act. So I, it was kind of nice. It was like, oh, I actually auditioned and got this role. So, so maybe if I had a better voice or an accent, they'd oh, pick me up go. for you a role. You could totally could do it, Nicole. Maybe play the queen. No, my. Yes, <laughs> you could totally do it. See, this maybe is your audition tape for that actual thing. Uh, yes, yeah. for all inquiries, just email me. Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> there you go, it's out there in the world. No, I'm just so excited about this new chapter and what's opening up with this movie and people, mm. I never knew the story of your life. You know, Rebecca St. James is on the scene. I'm a, a young teen. I'm hearing the music. I'm thinking it's awesome. I'm thinking you're awesome. And I'm not, you know, visualizing the backstory. Mm. For someone who might not have seen the movie or can you give us just a little bit of the, the summary? Yeah. So we moved, our family moved to the U.S. when I was 14. Mm -hmm. Six kids in our family, my mom pregnant with my sister. And, um, we came because my dad got offered a job here in Nashville and then that job fell through. So we mm. were now on the other side of the world with no car, no income, no furniture in our rental house, um, six kids, my mom very pregnant, no insurance, no way for her to be born in a hospital. And we just prayed as a family. We sat on the floor and prayed and saw miracles happen. So groceries on the doorstep, furniture show at our house, checks in the mail that would just cover bills, someone pay for my sister to be born, like thing after thing after thing. And so the, the story of the film really is, is you know, telling that story mm -hmm. of what God did in our absolute like time of need. Mm -hmm. And um, it gave me a testimony. When I started full-time in music at 16, I had mm -hmm. a story to tell, which is powerful. You know, we were talking before with the taping and we were, you said something about the term the winter season. Yeah. Would you call that season of need a winter season? Probably for my parents, not so much for me or my siblings. I think they were, and the movie really shows this, like they were passing it off as this adventure. You know, we're on the other side of the world in America and we're living by faith and we have these needs, but you know, God's gonna meet them. And I, don't, I didn't know how close to the poverty line we were. Yeah. Like, um, and so I think the winter season for me came later in life. I got a text not long before we, we sat down to shoot this, and it was from an organization that if I told you the name of the organization, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I've heard of them. Yeah. And one of the owners just sent me what's going on right now, and it's really hard, and they're at the end of their rope, and they're, they're having to walk by more faith than ever, and yep. there's a little bit of health breakdown due to the stress, yep. and all of these things are happening. And I think that's so familiar to, to so many of us. Yep. And just because you've walked through a hard season and seen God be faithful, 
it doesn't mean that like, okay, well I accomplished that faith need, check, never need to do that again. Yeah. It, it comes back around and along. Yeah. So you talked about walking through infertility. So after you'd seen God do all these miracles early in your life, yeah. you grow and like infertility is tough. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about mm -hmm. what happened? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, we had already had our daughter and had her so easily and well. And so I think it was one of those life curveballs that I just did not see coming. Mm -hmm. And it was just so shocking. My mom had seven kids and no miscarriages. I just thought this is not gonna, I mean, you know that could, but I just, in my heart, I thought it won't. Yeah. And so then I miscarry and it's like my body's betraying me and oh. it's not working in the way that it was built to. And like, did I do something or what do I need to do? And I can't control that. And then it's still not happening in another miscarriage. And, and then my husband's going through this job loss that again, we didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, can't control that either. Mm -hmm. And there was betrayal. It was just so much pain. Yeah. And then I was come, I had just come out of music too, and like nearly 20 years of music and some burnout. And I was emotionally dealing with a lot as well. So I think sometimes in life it can just, it just piles up. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the curve balls and the pain just kind of piles up. But I think in that time, I mean, I, I liken it to a winter season because it felt like we were just cold and it was dark and it was like cloudy and like you just can't see the sun and it's like you're under snow and it's just so difficult. But I also now know like that season of dormancy where it just feels like nothing is happening but everything that is happening is hard. It's such a fertile time in our lives for God to do this deep work and yeah. for us to trust Him in this different way. Yeah where it's like, God, I'm trusting that you are faithful and you're good and you will bring redemption. Yes. And I feel like we that's all we need to do in that time is, Lord, you're good. Please bring good out of this. We don't know how you're gonna do it, but we trust that you will. And we saw him do that. Like mm -hmm. now coming on the, through the other side of it, like he released me from so much pain kind of overnight. It was the most miraculous, like winter to spring, like darkness to dawn mm -hmm. time. And I've written a whole album out of that. I now speak to people that are in their winter season about spring. Like he's used it for good in my own faith journey, but then also in ministry to others. This is your year to make a change and become a new improved version of yourself. The only challenge, you're ready, but you might not know where to begin. What if you could have a mentor to pour into you? And for just five minutes a day, get the change that you've been wanting in your life. Didn't want to take that same cookie cutter self-improvement course. So I found Better Life in Five. Nicole Crank said, there is no change without a challenge. I found out my blind spots. Better Life in Five, not only do you write your goals down, but it will help you chart out a path to succeed in those goals. You can do the same thing for you. Check it out, it's a great course. I want to be your mentor on this 24 day journey. Each day, I will send you five minutes of insightful teaching. Just five minutes, everybody's got five minutes. And then one practical exercise. Why? Because I believe in the power of tiny tweaks leading to giant peaks. Get access to invaluable insights, guidance, and a roadmap to a better life. If you find yourself starting new habits only to end up back at square one within weeks, I've put together this course with the specific intention of providing you with the steps to confidently walk in the destiny that God has envisioned for you. Are you ready to start this 24 day journey with me? Visit betterlifein5.com. It's time to invest in yourself. Better Life in Five. I think about God's character and that He's with me all the time. I read my Bible, I pray a lot, I go to the Word of God and I look at what His promises are and I read about who He is and remind myself that God is with me, God is for me, God protects me and God will walk me through this. I think the practice of building community around you bi biologically, relationally, through church life and so on is so um, profoundly important when it comes to you there's sometimes you can't dig yourself out of the ditch well, you know what does the sort of parable say that two is better than one because if one falls into a ditch someone else is there to pull them out and so if mentally emotionally spiritually you fall into a ditch you need someone there to, to pull you out
when you say winter season, sometimes spring is known for rain, right? And what did they say? Is yeah. it March or April? It's like in like a lion, out like a lamb, and April showers yes. bring Mayflowers, yes. and what do yes. Mayflowers bring? Pilgrims, you know? <laughs> yeah. But so, so sometimes when it rains, it pours. Yes. And as you were walking through infertility, you had another challenge at the same time with your employment or job or husband or? Yes, you know. with my husband, yeah. And I think that was one of the hardest things about that time was it was like, I was low emotionally, and I'm an encourager. Like, I, I feel like I'm built to encourage. Like, even in my, my music, it's kind of like that, that's what I did. Yeah. And that's what I do is I just encourage and build up and speak, speak life through song mm -hmm. and through my testimony. And it was like, I was so low at that point, mm -hmm. And then my husband, Cubby, was so low that it was almost like we didn't really even have a whole lot of encouraging words to say to each other. It was like, authentically, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you could just go, we're going to be good. It's going to work out. And it, in marriage, that doesn't really carry super well because yeah. that person knows you so well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was one of the, the hardest the things. Of oh, the, there's a 100%. difference between faith and faking faith. And even though you want to be in faith, right, sometimes, sometimes all you've got is the, the fake version yeah. as you're trying to get into the pool. Like yes. When the pool is really cold, and I always think pools are really cold. <laughs> like, give me July, it'd be 102 degrees. I think the pool is really cold. It's gotta be a hot tub for it to be warm for you, right? Yeah. You, you know, you can put your toe in, but you're not in the pool yet. Mm. And you know, you can get down on the first rung of the ladder, but you're not in the pool yet. You Sometimes mm. you have to work into it. And, and once you work into the pool, like when I first get in the pool, I hate it. Like it's awful, I'm freezing, I'm literally shivering. I have goose, my goosebumps have goosebumps. <laughs> my, my, my mouth will literally chatter and it's mm -hmm. July. My mouth, ugh, ugh. but then after a while I get used to it mm -hmm. and it's not that the water changed, but I did. Yeah. Um, how, how did you guys go from that, we're gonna make it, to like really knowing, okay God, whatever happens, we're gonna make it. Well, it was wild because I think up until that point, I had really been in the spot of, before I share anything about kind of, you know, what God's done in my life, I have to have the bow wrapped up, mm -hmm. like the, the story completed. This is what God did and it's all so bright and shiny and good yeah. now. And I, I did a show in Alaska with my brothers in Fiking Country and I wasn't really singing at that point, but I just knew I was meant to do the show and I was like in worship. And I really felt that God wanted me to share about the mm. miscarriages while still in the middle of it. Mm. And I just said to the audience, you know, we're in the middle of this hard season. We've miscarried. We're still in it. All we know to do is just trust that God is good and that He's with us and He's going to do something beautiful out of this time. Literally, I start crying on stage, which I never do. The audience just sniffles all through the room. You could just hear people being moved by it. The Holy Spirit was so thick on that place. It was probably like the thickest I've ever felt the Holy Spirit in the room. I can feel Him now. Right, right. It was like transformative. And it was almost like I, I, it was such an encounter with Him that I like walked off stage. I said to my brother Joel, who was there backstage, I said, God just did this crazy move in my life of like redemption and my heart changing, mm. my heart warming, like being strangely warmed, like John Wesley said, like it was just this encounter with Him. And I, I said, I think God's just called me back to music. Um, I saw my past differently. I saw my future differently. So much of my burnout pain fell away. And immediately after that encounter with him that nothing had shifted on the external, but I had shifted. Mm -hmm. I fell pregnant with our second child, our second daughter, and we now have a son as well. Uh -huh. And both just him, like both just him doing it. Wow. So I'm, I'm thankful for the pain now because of the testimony that's given me. Yeah. I'm thankful. And it gives so many people hope. Yeah. And I just can't help but think, I, I wasn't in that room, but just from the story that you tell, from the palpable, just even movement feel, of the Spirit, yeah. That there, he wasn't just doing... In other people. In surgery on you, surgery on them yes. in that moment. Yes. Like it, you, turned a, you turned a concert into an operating room. Yeah. Well, and I feel like so many people, and especially now, in the world that we're living in, there's so much stress, anxiety, fear. This, the, I think even for a lot of believers, there's a sense of not yet. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of waiting. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of being patient through the pain and mm -hmm. through the fear. And, and again, just being open-handed, not mm -hmm. gripping on in fear to yeah. everything that is yeah. kind of of the world, but just opening our hands and just saying, Lord, have your way, have your mm -hmm. way. Like, 
let this patience that you're teaching me lead to pers perseverance and hope and character, like let it lead to good fruit in my life. Mm. And I think that when we're just that dependent, like none of us like to be that, like that pushed, right? Mm -hmm. But I think if we're open to God in the middle of it, it creates this dependence on Him that is just the most beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful to witness in other believers when you're just surrendered like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always encouraged when I just see people turning to Jesus in that way. And honestly, I think that's what people are responding to about Unsung Hero, this movie, is because they see our family turning to God mm -hmm. in a place of near despair for my dad. Yes. Um, and they see God coming through. Yeah. And it's powerful. Having fear and not knowing where you're going, but walking the direction that you feel God has you to walk anyway, mm -hmm. like Abram, right? Abraham, yeah. Abram, he doesn't know where he's going, yeah. but he has to take these steps and leave yeah. everything he knows. It's the next right thing. He's yeah. go God's gonna lead us to that next right step, yeah. Uh, we own some property. We own a few acres in St. Louis. We live kind of in the woods and we were, we just moved in and we were disrupting the yard. So we tore up all the grass. And it would seem like you would plant grass in the springtime because that just makes sense, right? Because yeah. things can't grow when it's cold outside. But what we've learned is that if you plant grass in the winter, yep. there's something about the snow sitting on the yeah. seed for a whole season hmm. that as soon as the light comes, mm. it grows so much faster. Mm. So that's we, awesome. We have this whole area of grass that's coming up. And so now here we are in springtime and I'm like, why didn't we plant all the rest of the grass this yes. winter? Because we have grass here and now it's going to get hot and it's going to, it's going to seem like the hot season where everything's going and where everything's good, but it's actually going to be harder to plant mm. in that season mm. um, because mm. it's harder to plant in the, in the summer season. Mm. I love the spiritual analogy. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Since 1979, Iran has been heavily controlled by Islamic leadership. Under this regime, Christians must practice their faith with extreme caution, for even being seen carrying a Bible would mean certain death. But nonetheless, in the past two decades, Iran has had the fastest growing church in the world. Thanks in part to organizations like Iran Alive Ministries helping to equip not only Iran, but millions of people all over the Middle East to help grow their faith. I'm constantly looking for solid Christian teachings for my fellow Iranians. Iran Alive Ministries reaches an average of six million Farsi speakers each day and over 20 million each week. Iran Alive Ministries TV channel is the number one most watched Christian channel in Iran and stretches out to Afghanistan and other regions in the Middle East that are significantly Farsi speaking, which reaches potentially 130 million people in the Middle East. I um, am a follower of Nicole Crime myself, and I asked her, I said, can we somehow air your Nicole Crank show episodes into Iran in Farsi? <laughs> Thank you for supporting this ministry. Thank you for supporting Nicole Prang to be able to dub her program into Farsi and air it in Iran. In just a second, Rebecca's going to pray for you. I feel like I've walked through some pretty serious winter seasons in my life with divorce and being foreclosed on, bankruptcy, and there's always a but God at the end of them. But I can't imagine being in a country like Iran where there, it seems like there is no end to the winter season at all, right? There is no spring, there is no opportunity. Because I was born female, everybody's gonna look down on me and think I'm second class for the rest of my life. That's why we're bringing this show to Iran, to give the women that are trapped in that culture hope and let them know that there is a God who sees them and a God who loves them. That He brought a son named Jesus and He came to die so that they could live. And the only way to bring them that message is if you help me. I'm looking for partners right now. I'm looking for people to say, I can think outside of myself and I can sow into other people's lives. They're all children of the Most High God. And I'm asking you, will you help me? Will you go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash partner? Help me with $20 a month. What is that, a lunch out? How about $50 a month? That's a dinner if you go somewhere cheap. $100 a month is, is if it's one nice dinner. Could you give one meal a month away to someone who needs hope desperately? 
What if you're the answer to their winter season? I want to say thanks for helping me. Thanks for going to NicoleCrank.com forward slash partner and helping us reach people in their winter season. Rebecca's going to pray for us. Well, let me just encourage you if you are in your winter season, I just, I, I so passionately encourage you to cling to Jesus. Like just look to Him as your hope because absolutely anything else will fail you. So I just encourage you to, to press into Him. Um, that can look like a lot of different things. That can look like prayer. That can look like, you know, digging in the, in the Bible. That can look like reading a great Christian book. That can also look like community. You're, who are you surrounding yourself with that's encouraging you and building you up? That can look like your church family coming around you. That can look like being vulnerable mm -hmm. within your family or your community about where you're at. But just don't go it alone. I really encourage you, don't go this winter season alone. There's something be so beautiful about being in incredibly deep pain, expressing it, and then having people gather around you, put their arms of love around you and say, you're not alone, you're not alone. So I encourage you to invite that in your life, but let me pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, I just pray for um, the person that's watching right now that is so discouraged and so beaten down and um, so overwhelmed by the curveballs of life uh, that they just feel despairing in moments, that they feel hopeless in moments. And I just pray that you meet them right now by your spirit, with your hope, that you remind them that with God's power in us, God can do much, much more than yeah. anything we can ask or even imagine, Ephesians 3.20. I just pray that you help them to know that you have abundant hope and life mm -hmm. and joy for them, John 10.10. 10. Lord, I just thank you that you've come to, to bring life. And so I just pray that whoever is listening to this right now, that they will really turn to you, mm -hmm. maybe in a deeper way than they ever have in their life. I pray that you show them the redemption that you are bringing, mm -hmm. that you give them glimpses of the good that you're doing through mm -hmm. this pain, mm -hmm. that you just restore hope and that you do restore the years that the locust has eaten, mm -hmm. Lord, like you've, you've shown me in my life. Um, I just pray for um, your perfect love to be felt yeah. by this brother or sister that's listening right now. And so we give them to you and just pray for a transformative encounter with your spirit, Lord, that changes everything. It mm -hmm. changes how we view our past, our future, everything. Um, we love you and we give this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. And guys, if you haven't seen the movie Unsung Hero, uh, the story of Rebecca's family, uh, the story of her life. And here's the thing. The movie is called Unsung Hero. I'm watching the story and I, I didn't see the end coming. I didn't actually realize it was about her life. So I hate to be a spoiler, but it's a little bit about her, okay? <laughs> but if you need encouragement, if you need a good film, if you need the faith in your soul to be woke up, go see Unsung Hero. Going, keep going, keep going. Okay, the veggie tail thing we might have to talk about. Yes, that that's is fun. so cool. That is fun. <laughs> oh. Keep going, 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 keep going. Oh, there we go. Nope, oh, there it is. Okay, keep going.